Thanks, Marlene. In recent years, fashion and lifestyle magazines targeting young women of color between the ages of 18 to 34 have come and gone. Though many of these publications were popular, the companies that owned the magazines couldn't keep them afloat. Clutch is one of the few online publications that is filling the void. Abby Shola explores this trend in two parts. We hear from her first in this report and then in a roundtable with four young women who sometimes feel invisible in the mainstream media. Geneva Thomas is normally up by the crack of dawn researching stories on major newswires. As content editor for ClutchMagOnline.com, her job is to find entertainment and lifestyle stories that relate to the African-American community. She and a team of writers then tailor the news and their views to Clutch Mag's very distinct female audience. Clutch is definitely for, you know, young women of color from like ages 18 to 34, very sort of um, fashionable women, women who are in college, very, very informed um, women, um, very opinionated, very just confident, super confident women, um, just very sort of like the it girls, if you will, um, but we have a very diverse readership. A readership that Thomas and others say has gone underserved for years. Though popular magazines like Ebony, Jet, and Essence target a broad age range of African Americans, Clutch, owned by Sutton Media, is one of very few cost-effective digital media outlets that speaks to young African American women. I think that, you know, while I can pick up Essence and sort of, you know, see some really cool things like, okay, the beauty pages or maybe like, you know, what's happening now in terms of news, I think that it's really speaking to like older black women, like my mother's age, you know, there's concerns about, you know, okay, how to pay your mortgage or how to get your credit down. And it's like, you know, those are concerns for us, but not immediate concerns. Like we're more concerned about how we're going to pay our rent and how we're going to pay student loans and how to get a job. And, you know, my boyfriend um, looked at me that way. What does that mean? You know, why Clutch that isn't the first to cover this market. <laughs> In 2004, Essence Communications released Suede Magazine. The glossy featured cutting-edge beauty pages, multiple high-end fashion spreads, and feature stories on black socialites and celebrities. After just four issues, Suede was shelved due to high production costs and poor advertising revenue. To this day, ladies lament the magazine's departure. Some have even started a Facebook group and petitioned to bring the title back. Michaela Angela Davis is the former editor-in-chief of the now-defunct Honey magazine. The groundbreaking monthly also catered to urban women ages 18 to 34. How do you feel about the fact that there's so few publications that target African American women ages 18 to 34? You know, there are times I feel like it's a political issue and it's an industrial issue and publishing is hostile, and, but at the end of the day, it's heartbreaking. Honey Magazine was shelved in 2005 after 10 successful years on newsstands. Davis says though the magazine secured 1.5 million readers and over $1 million in advertising revenue, the struggling company that owned the title couldn't stay afloat. The rest of the world doesn't get to hear our voice. They don't get to benefit the way that we can, you know, look at Teen Vogue or we can have an, a cultural exchange with other magazines um, that target that audience that aren't black. They, we get to learn about them, so the, the, the cultural exchange is cut off. Sahara Media, founded by a former music executive, later purchased Honey and publishes the title as an online magazine catering to the same audience. Still, Davis says, there should be a print publication to represent the demographic. If one black girl falls or one black girl's magazine falls, people don't scurry to go pick her up and let's go brush her off and help her and go over here, you know. Redesigned and restaffed at least three times. They could see a vision for that. Entertainment Weekly was not lucrative for over five years. But they could see a vision for it. They're like, oh, we know this can work. We can, they can envision it because it's their distinct, their culture. So I think it's hard for people to really envision black girls. And I think it's very hard for them to invest in black girls, even though we were profitable. It's the same at Clutch, where there's been a struggle to convince big companies to advertise, even though the site boasts a quarter million readers. But the leaders at Sutton Media aren't daunted. The company recently launched a fashion blog and has a men's website in the works. For Independent Sources, 
Abby Ashola. So we'll start with you, Samantha. Sure. How do you feel about lifestyle magazines like Ebony and Essence? It's not, they're not magazines that I ever pick up. Um, if, you know, I'm at the doctor's office and there's an essence, I love it and I might try to sneak it home. Yes. Right? It's a magazine you borrow. Okay, but um, I wouldn't really, I, I'd probably buy, i probably buy something else if I had to choose. Um, Why is that though? It just, it doesn't speak to me completely. I feel like as a black woman, essence speaks to me because, you know, um, if you're talking about fibroids or HIV rates in the black community, as a black woman, it speaks to me. Um, as far as my own sense of style or um, my lifestyle, not so much. And it's great to see that, that black beauty on the newsstands every month as well as Ebony Magazine. But for me, I feel like it's the same magazine every month. You know, it's sort of just a different cover. And then after a while, some of those covers seem like the same cover. How many times have we seen Mary J. Blige on the cover of Essence Magazine? Love Mary J. Blige to death. But I don't need to see her on the cover again. Like, mm -hmm. let's see some new, fresh faces who are just as talented and just as fresh as Mary. I have to agree with you. I feel like I'm tired of seeing the same people. Like, Beyonce, I think, has done both, like, ten times, each time. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, we, like you said, we need to yeah. bring more people that are accomplished or that are up and coming. I don't see why not. There's a reason why there's a Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and... Mm -hmm you know, the same people on the covers, because those are the people that people will buy and that, that appeal to a sort right. of wide swath. And we have to recognize that, you know, Essence is a business. Yeah. And, you know, they're fighting for, you know, those newsstand dollars as much as, you know, Vogue is, which is why Vogue <laughs> is also has the same, right. you know, cast of people, mm -hmm. you know, on their covers. Mm -hmm. So I think that, and I think that black magazines specifically have a hard time because, you know, whereas we will go out and buy a Vogue and an L, it's really, I, I've mm -hmm. never seen any of my white girlfriends <laughs> pick up an Essence That's or true. an Ebony. And so they're, they, they have a really narrow market that is like, that they can kind of rely on. Right. Do you guys read magazines like clutchmagonline.com or Honey Magazine online? <laughs> or did you read Honey Magazine when it was a print publication? The reason why a lot of us go online is because I know for me, reading Essence is great, love it, but a lot of times you spoke to the fact that it doesn't fit your lifestyle or mm -hmm. these looks may look great, but I'm like, I can't afford to pay $300 for a dress. Like, <laughs> when is it going on sale? Like, you know, I'll look for it three months from now. And why I know I go online is, you know, things like Clutch Magazine, Glut, Guts, Glam and Grace, you know, those are gonna talk about the high and the low, mixing those things together. But what about their stories on clutchmag.com? Do you follow the stories? Do you think the stories are on point for you? I do. You know, I remember reading a story on Clutch about something, it was like, you know, the clutchy girlfriend. And I'm like, this is so true. <laughs> you know, like, I, I felt like I would not have seen that in Essence Magazine or Ebony Magazine. And, you know, I want to stop saying Essence because I feel bad. I feel like I'm like, bad Essence, bad Essence. And that's not the case. But I feel like I would not have seen that in one of the newsstands mags. If you guys can tailor the newsstand <laughs> for African-American women, what would you do? How, what would you change? I would put lots of different types of black women on the cover. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of seeing the same black girl with the caramel colored weave, <laughs> you know, or now that Rihanna's out, so now it's like, or the one with the edgy, I mean, it's the same thing. I'm sick and tired of that. I would just put, there's a plethora, you know, I would put more dark skinned girls on the covers because they all, they the caramel hair, the caramel skin, it's like, they all look like Shakira. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I would actually like explore more ethnic women doing different things, you know, maybe like global, internationally and highlight their works and their accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel cheated in a way that these things don't exist on the newsstands? I do. I do, I do as do. well. I do. I'm like, you got Elle, Lucky, <laughs> Vogue, Vogue, Cosmo, Glamour. I'm like, I got Essence and Ebony. Essence yeah. and Ebony. <laughs> yeah, like, One I think the other. That that's part of, you know, why I'm, you know, sort of kind of defending them because yeah. they have so much pressure. They do. Mm -hmm. They're trying to Talk to auntie, talk to us, talk to the our little sisters, and, and that's not fair, yeah. you know? It's not fair to them, and I don't know what we can do about it, you know, because it seems like either that is, is out there or it's like a straight-up music magazine. 
And that's cool too, but like we're talking about fashion here, you know, mm. what's a, a good lifestyle women's magazine that we can look to that speaks to us? When we come back, can productions about people of color find an audience in the great right way? <laughs> 